and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for the last time. And just like that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we are here with the finale episode yeah. with my amazing co-host, who's been with me, who we've been riding out this entire season, through oh, yeah. all the ups and downs, valleys and lows, the she's, him's, they's, hers, everything that you all complained about, we rode it through to this finale episode. Miss Amaya Desire, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing well. I cannot complain. <laughs> so let's get into the fun of this episode. So for the finale episode, for again, for people not accustomed to these, it's normally the wrap up to maybe what's going to happen next. Mm -hmm. And this episode was clearly the wrap up of a lot of things, a lot of love moving forward, a lot of choices being made, some of them that I don't understand because how dare I spend money on a party and then you wait to that party to tell me you're not going to do something. What? But <laughs> let's start off with the episode and with Carrie going on a date with the teacher. As we mm -hmm. saw at the end of the last episode, they kind of decided just to be friends and see how this would go. And here we see them have a very intimate moment followed mm -hmm. by her, I want to say, feeling immediate guilt about being intimate with someone else. Yeah. What did you think about that whole setup from her? Again, finally giving the teacher another chance, going out on this date with him, him kissing her, and then the light flickering. <laughs> um, you know, I found it very interesting because the light flickering was, was something I didn't expect. And when I'm watching shows, I really like to see things that I don't necessarily think could happen mm -hmm. in my head. And so I thought that that was actually a really good way to kind of discuss how there are many people who lose a loved one, um, you know, lose, lose a spouse, be it by death or divorce, usually by death, where... Mm -hmm they do feel guilty. They do feel like I shouldn't move on this fast. And, you know, we got to see a glimpse of where we actually are, right? When she met with his father and yeah. it's almost been a year now. So, you know, but I, I like that she's still, like, again, she's still grieving. It's one day at a time for her, one foot in front of the other. And I think that that's, you know, something that's normal or reaction kind of sort of to feel that guilt. Mm -hmm. I do think that it was interesting that even after the lamp had been fixed, that she dared to um, think it was a sign and then also ended up having a dream about Big. So that was really, that was really touching. Now, what did you think about the scene with the father? Because I think that was a very interesting moment that they had there from him asking her, like, well, where's my son? And then suggesting that uh, he could go into the family crib. Because you would assume this would have been some form of discussion her and Big had. And her reluctancy to do it, maybe it comes across as this wasn't necessarily something he wanted to do. That was a little confusing for me because yeah. ideally the child, the children or the child bury the parent. It's not usually the other way around. So in order to have this happen where big dies, you know, before the, the, the dad, yeah. um, I'm kind of shocked. I mean, it's really tough. I, I feel like that should have been a conversation because mm -hmm. the fact that his family already has a family burial site would it would equate to me that naturally you would add your wife into the plot that's already been exactly. Um, so I did think it was a little bit odd, and I I would have considered um, Carrie possibly getting a small urn to put some of the ashes for the mm. father so that way he could have had that of his son because let's be realistic here if i die y'all uh, listen nobody's coming to visit my ashes <laughs> <in Paris. laughs> okay we're not doing that um so I thought it was interesting and I, I did feel I did feel a kind of way about that. I'm not sure how that's supposed to work when it comes mm -hmm. to houses, but I do think that as he still has family remaining alive that would like to cherish him, there should have been some sort of conversation and compromise perhaps. That way the family could still have peace of him with him 
or them. Yeah. And you would still be able to have peace with him with her. It, it, or like just a split. Like, you know, right. we'll take this portion, you'll take this portion. Mm-hmm. Because we want him, at least a piece of him to be with the rest of the family here. Right. And the point that it waited a year for them to have that conversation. Yeah. I mean, I understand the dad wanting to give her space because he clearly he shows that in his caring in just a few words they share mm-hmm. when she was like, you know, but he asked her how she was doing and she said, you know, I'm okay, but not always okay. He said, that's fully understandable. So it's clear he's willing to give her that time and that space to get over this loss. Right. But at the same time, he's a grieving parent who had to watch his son like, well, I can't even see bury his son. Right. Because they cremated him. Yeah. And then he just wants a piece of him with the rest of the family. I, I just found that a weird thing to set up there, a weird conclusion to set up there. That out of out of a whole year, this is their first conversation truly having about yeah. what to do with Biggs remains. I'm wondering how well he actually how well they knew each other. Exactly. How, how well do they know each other? Because, you know, when she said, oh, he's on the shelf right next to my most expensive and my most important, sh- you know, shoes. And you know, you know what that meant if you knew me better. And I thought to myself, well, what does he know about you? What do you know? Mm-hmm. About you? What kind of conversation has been had? Which also brings up the point that this is why having your papers, you know, as far as your will and testament, it's so mm. important to have set up because... In the event that something does like this, something like this does happen, if you go before your parents, at least your parents are aware, especially if you're married, at least they're aware of what the conversation has been and what it is that you prefer and want in the time of your passing. So I think this is a, it's a little bit interesting of a conversation that needs mm-hmm. to be had, like you said, not a year later. Again, it's just one of those conversations that this show and this season has managed to bring up. That has so much deeper meaning to it that mm-hmm. could be one of those discussion pieces and you said it perfectly about what happens if i pass what happens if i pass before my parents how are we going to go about this why right. are we not discussing but well, this is what my family has set up this is what i i want to have happen this is what i don't want to have happen and to have those laid out for everyone that way it's not a surprise to the family when certain decisions are made right but exactly sp- speaking of certain decisions being made Next, we have the most hated character from and just like <laughs> this season, and that is Miss Miranda, who's decided that she's going to go away with Shay, give up everything for love, including the internship that supposedly was extremely hard to get into. And mm-hmm. I'm just going to say it, okay? I did not like this ending for this character. Yeah. It just does not. This is not the Miranda from any portions of sex in the city Mm -hmm. this didn't even seem like a smart move that she pulled off here but before i go for my little rant about why i did not like it what did you think about not only the decision but and i'm going to call it the way uh shay i'm gonna say bombarded her Mm -hmm. with with this huge party saying that i want you to meet my family but at the same time announcing that I'm moving away. Right. What did you think about that whole setup? And do you no. think they were wrong for doing that to Miranda? Listen, no. <laughs> no. Okay. No, no, and no. In no circumstance do you spring on me at a party that you're leaving and going to California. And what I didn't like is that... Um, Miranda seems so clueless. Like, you know, what's happening? Well, does anybody know what's going on? Well, what's this? Instead of kind of just enjoying and seeing where it took her, mm-hmm. you know, I felt like she was just too, she's been too antsy for me this entire season. She's been too antsy, too eager, too anxious, you know, like so indecisive. And it's just mind boggling. I, of course, would have liked Shay to explain previously to the mm. that they had gotten a job offer in LA and that they were going to leave, which is fine because hey, I'm happy for you. Like this is a major deal that you you absolutely deserve it. Um, absolutely, you should go to LA. But to spring that on Miranda, knowing that 
she still has a kid, right? Despite him being 18 now, she still has a kid. Um, Steve and her, or have they fully divorced yet? Like, there's so many questions that I have. It just seems like they just kind of ran this character situation together. And mm. I don't I don't particularly care for it. Um it I get it, okay, because <laughs> I'm your favorite lover of love. Like, absolutely hands down. I'm the probably one of the most you know, romantic and I love, love people you'll meet. But in this scenario, it just seems so not well thought out. And I know that we can do that when it comes to love. So, hey, you know, I cannot cast any stones because I live in a two by four glass house. So <laughs> what do you think about the conversation with her and Carrie? That also was extremely interesting. It was Carrie throwing a little shade, but her actually making good points. Like, you're giving up everything that you've been setting up for this. Yeah. And, and what, are you just going to go there to, to watch TV shows? Because that's, technically... That's good question. Because if all they're doing is setting up for the pilot, that's all you're going to be there to do. Like, are you willing to... Basically, are you willing to end your career or end whatever path that you're currently on? Mm-hmm just to be there for support of a potential opportunity? Because if that opportunity does not come out... You'll be coming back. Where does that leave you? You're starting all over from scratch again. Yeah. What did you think just about that whole conversation? Again, we again, we just talked about how leaving may not... It just seemed wrong in well, a way. I think that, you know, those kind of conversations among friends, close friends... Mm -hmm. um, like that are very difficult because you're not trying to throw shade, you know, like I carry mo said multiple times, you know, like I'm not being judgy, like absolutely go to LA, but I think she just wanted her to think it through, like mm -hmm. to think this through, this is a moment in your life. You will never get it back. Um, think it through. And so I, I think that Carrie presented, you know, reasonable questions. Nothing was, um, nothing was out of the ordinary for me, but I do think that they have had tension in this friendship since she's mm. Shay in her, you know, in her home, regardless of whether how the sex was had, whether it was by hand or not, it's mm -hmm. sex, right. And so I think that there is a still a little bit of uncomfortability of a conversation they didn't really have in regards to the whole entire thing of what happened. Um, and so I think that that's a little bit part of what, what came out with, you know, with Carrie in the bathroom and having this conversation. Yeah. Cause that's, again, that was another huge moment helped by the trans rabbi mm -hmm. who just happened to step and let him know, like, we, I clearly I like see that. that you two love each other, but you know, maybe y'all are in different places. You need to work on this a little better right now. Like that was a good message to send forth for these two, because it looked like we were heading to a friendship that was going to end. Mm -hmm. And they're like, no, technically this is what friends do. This this is not an easy thing to go through. Especially yeah. when you have one friend transitioning in life to a different place. Absolutely. While someone is still dealing with a loss and transitioning in a completely different way. And sometimes those wavelengths don't match up. And for them too, it hasn't matched up again since she slept with Shay in her apartment. Right. Like that hurt Carrie more than anything, and Carrie was never open and honest about right. how much that hurt her, and it's been bleeding over this entire season because of that reason. Mm -hmm. Now, I got to talk about characters that I wish I would have seen more in this finale. Why did we only get one scene of Doctor Nia Wallace, and only a hint to all the conflict that we got in the last episode between her mm -hmm. and her husband? Yeah. <sighs> Let's just talk, quickly talk about the little bit that we did get, that they decided to do what we talked about. Mm -hmm. maybe, take a break. Maybe it's time to take a break. Not only take a break from baby making, but take a break from each other to see how mm -hmm. that looks. What did you think about the minimal time they gave it? <laughs> and what do you think about the conclusion they came up to as with their relationship? Well, I think that it's actually, it's not surprising. You know, he's a musician. He was going to go on the road one way or another. And um, I think that 
you know, sometimes you do need to see what it's like apart from each other, mm -hmm. not in each other's space, no contact to decide, am I really willing to, to leave this? Am I willing to jeopardize possibly what I have in order to have something different? And so um, I think that that part of that part definitely got got to me like i understood that because we are sometimes so in love that we're blinded by it um we see our own way and what it is that we want that we are kind of uh narrow narrow-minded right you know tunnel vision and so i think that the both of them really need to have a conversation with e with themselves in this mm. time of separation you know what do i truly really want and am I willing to give that up for this person? Um, and so I think those are conversations that we should all be having with ourselves. And so for me, it was very much like, okay, yeah, I could see, but I could also see like the, the I don't want to call it pain, but I could see the emotion in her face. I think she did a very good job captivating that, that moment that you see in her face. And um, it's like, wow, like, okay, yeah. I'm, I don't know, you know, and it's okay to say, I don't know, but you yep. decide to take this step back, give each other space and figure it out on our own and then possibly come back together. So, yeah. All right. And the last one, the last big storyline of the season and of this episode, Charlotte versus rock. Cause that's what I'm calling it at this point. Cause clearly yeah. that's, that's what it's been like for a lot of this season as she again goes above and beyond to be the perfect mom to set up everything humanly possible without speaking to her child of what they actually want to have happen. <laughs> and she set up this huge bar mitzvah, gets her, the trans rat, gets them, I'm sorry, the okay. trans rabbi, everything to have this beautiful moment for Rock to come and say, I don't want to do this. Yeah. This is, this is not, I, I was a little conflicted because I felt a, I felt I had an issue with them saying, I'm only 13. Why do I have to make a decision now? And then immediately, unfortunately for me, I start thinking of every other big decision that you made and none of it pertained, or did you put your age into any of it? Right. And why would it be here that That's that would now. be? Yeah, that yeah. confused me a little bit. That was but my we, thought. That okay. was my thought process because, and I just... To be quite honest, I feel like, and this will be with any kid, right? Let me make that clear. The ungratefulness that mm. has shown this entire season has been almost like intentionally pushing the bar. You know, like my, my family's from the Caribbean. We always say, you know, like you give somebody an inch and they take a goddamn yard, right? Like I'm confused as to why why rock felt like that was necessary like you, it's such a big moment that matters to your parents mm -hmm. um, but i'm pretty sure you did not just think of like hmm i might not want to do this you have probably thought about it previously and you're now really at the event the day of saying this i just felt like it was a slap in the face to charlotte and i just feel like Charlotte also is not doing her um, herself any service um, by not really speaking up about how this stuff is is getting to her. Mm -hmm. I feel like she's wearing a mask. You're doing any and everything, you know, um, like TK said, um, and you're doing anything to make sure that you... Uh, everything is perfect. You yeah. know, mm -hmm. you went through all these hoops right that you to make this night uh this event especially special for rock and then they decided mm, you know what nah i don't want it and it just felt disheartening and i feel at some point if we see another season of this i i'm, I'm sure that we will um that I possibly would like to see Charlotte in therapy because I think that mm. it's not healthy what she's doing. And as somebody who's seen it in real life, 
you know, you need to be honest with your kids. This is unacceptable. This, and I feel like sometimes we don't know how to do that because um, parents don't know how to tell their kids like, well, hey, listen, you hurt my feelings. And of course, as a 13 year old, that's a very hard conversation to have, but it's like, I went out of my way for you. And it just doesn't seem, I, 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 if the scene had went, mom, I'm so sorry. I'm so, 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 so sorry. Like, I really apologize for doing this at the last minute, but I am not certain that this is the religion or the spiritual path for me. Okay, that's different. But you sitting here pouting and talking about something you don't want to do it? That to me was just, yeah, I was not happy with that. And I actually thought that the dad, I'm forgetting his name. Um, Harry. Yeah, Harry. I, I actually thought Harry was going to speak up more than he did. Yeah. It seemed like he just shut down. Mm -hmm. the mo because I don't think it's not talked about just how disrespectful that is towards him. Yeah. That, like, his religion. Like, yeah. for you to, for them to set up this big thing, this big thing, event for them. And then for them to decide at this event, I'm not going to do it. First, mm -hmm. that had never happened. I'm sorry. That is <laughs> that is something that only happens in certain households with certain <laughs> groups of people. And I'm just going to say it like that. I'm, that's all I'm going to say. Because if it was anyone else of this other group of people, you're going to do it. Yeah. Whether you like it or not. Right. Because if, it's later, you you don't want to be if, if it's something you didn't want to do, I should have known when we were planning this event. Mm -hmm. If you can speak up about everything else in your life, which is great, this ain't the time to be quiet about something. Right. I agree. I think they did a disservice to Rock, to Charlotte here. Mm -hmm. But again, it happens in families. This thing can happen, but yeah. that miscommunication is something that it just didn't come across as something that would happen. It's, we had it in, in another episode this year where I said, this is something I can't relate to. Because the caucasity of the situation <laughs> is something I could never see. Yeah, that's what because it was. this would never happen in a black yeah. family, unfortunately. Because, hey, after I just spent all this money, guess what you're going to do? Mm -hmm. You're going to go through with this. If later on you decide that this is something you don't want to do, I'm perfectly fine with having that conversation. But after the money I just spent, after all these halos that Charlotte said I got, <laughs> this ain't going to be the time where you're going to tell me this is something... <laughs> you don't want to do I agree, I agree all right so the end of the episode we finally get Carrie by herself back in front of Mike after Shay makes a decision to move to LA mm -hmm. and we get the sex and the city podcast yeah what was your thoughts about that looking like that setting up the second season and also the kiss at the end of the season at the end of the episode I, I felt that spark even before the mm -hmm. kids happened. I felt the spark at the wedding for the other coworker. And I thought to myself, mm, okay, this is, I know where this is going. Um, because you do need, I'm a, I'm a big fan of like sparks and chemistry and connection. And so I felt like you could see it there with them. It's all in the eyes. You know, yep. sometimes mm -hmm. people don't speak often. You don't need a lot, but it's in the eyes. Um, I actually like the Sex and the City podcast. And I, and I so two things, right? So one, the meetup with Samantha, right? <laughs> you know, because that was completely skipped over and, and like, we get it. We, but I liked to see, I'm glad I saw progression as far as the other person that, you know, Samantha wasn't shutting Carrie out as yeah. we saw in the beginning of the episode. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy for that. Um, but I do think that uh, the Sex and the City podcast is naturally what Carrie loves to do anyway. You know what I yeah. mean? I, I feel like it's right up her alley. It's an amazing opportunity for her and it puts her back on the map. And I do think that um, her having that moment, looking up into this man's eyes and seeing him like get closer to her obviously the camera she was there for both of them so i'm mm -hmm. interested to see what it's gonna look like in the next season um but i'm glad that she's taking risk because that's the key that's the key part there at the end of the day you know to have loved and lost is a tremendous you know heartache but 
to decide to get up and go at it again is the bravest thing that you could do. Now, final thoughts of this first season of Just Like That. Um, Miranda, I'm over. Uh, <laughs> Jay, nice to meet you. Um, Charlotte, spank your kids. Okay, for real. Um, yes, yes. Yes. Carrie, just keep taking risk and, you know, and, and jumping out there. So, I mean, overall, the season for me, I think it was very steady. I don't think that mm -hmm. it was anything too major that made me feel like, oh my God, this is awful. Um, and I'm excited to see what they do bring forth in the next season. I do think they should just consider maybe, I want to say broadening, broadening the horizon. Um, Mm. of the characters a little bit yes. you know and making it especially for charlotte it's unrealistic well let me oh excuse me let me rephrase that it's super realistic to have a woman who takes on the world has no problem in trying to give you the world um but if we don't see Charlotte in therapy for the next season, then we should be honest and see her breaking down. Mm. That is a, I'm not gonna lie, that sounds about right for this yeah. character. Yeah. So again, now my final thoughts on this season, kind of simple here. This was not the show that most people expected. Absolutely. I think people came into this expecting a complete sequel of sex in the city and just re revigorating thoughts of what it means to be sexy in your 50s and, and how you could take on the world and take on the big city at that age and instead you had you got a show that dealt with real relationships as you progress in life that's right. why it's called and just like that yeah things change things will never remain the same if this show would have gave, given us a complete sequel to sex in the city it would have been unrealistic yeah because we're dealing with older, mature women, all of them, at least at the beginning of it, in established relationships and going through the peaks and valleys of those relationships, whether it be with their children, whether they be with their career, whether it be with their husbands, anything they do should change as you get older. And that's what this show gave you. This show's just showing you, hey, this is what happens. And granted, it's not perfect. I like the show a lot. I like the season a lot. I understand it's not what everybody wanted and i understand it had flaws in it but yeah. for everyone who complains all i'll say is go back to the first set season of sex in the city and then to tell me that that show didn't have flaws when you're attempting to set up something it's gonna be that way and here we still got established characters we understand the direction that carrie's going into as amaya pointed out we understand the issues that will will be, I'm a, I'm going to say will be presented with Charlotte in the next season. Mm -hmm. We all understand we don't like Miranda, but we don't like Miranda. <laughs> we don't like Miranda because she's changed so much. Yeah, drastically. Yeah, and and it's hard to accept change. It doesn't mean it is not natural. It doesn't mean it's unrealistic. It happens. I have friends, and I'm pretty sure other people have friends that you knew 20 years ago. They are not the same person you know now. Yeah, and that's what she represented because that's what this show represented now through untimely passing of certain people in real life I know it changed possibly the dynamic of the show but it never changed the impact that this show can have this show opened up so many conversations that could be yeah. had as it pertains to relationships especially as you get older in life and it pertains to relationships whether it be how, what happens when you can't have children or you make the decision that I don't want to have children. Or you make the decision that my marriage is over and I don't want to just stay for the kids. Or accepting the different challenges of your children. Like this it, this is a whole conversation piece unto itself that you can have discussions almost on every episode. That's what this show was good for. If you sat back and watched it for that reason, I think you're going to thoroughly enjoy it. Some people just go back and watch it. I know at the beginning it shocked you and you're like, this is not the Carrie, Miranda, and Charlotte I want. Where the hell is Samantha? Why is she just texting? Why can't I see her on screen? We understand those things. Go back, though. You may like it. This is a hit show for a reason. 
It's the reason people like to watch it. Even if you hate watch it, mm -hmm. you still like to watch it for a reason. This has been Big Old Belt season review of And Just Like That. Peace, people. I had to raise my hand up. I keep on forgetting the camera.